Hey guys, Starlet 44 here. I need no introduction, but I got one anyway. It's Christmas! That's right, everybody. It's that time of year again. Christmas, my favourite time of the year. The time of season on Earth, goodwill to all men, and showing everyone you care by exchanging presents. But not everyone in the world always has a good time at Christmas. Some people are just complete scrooges about the whole thing, and others don't see the joy in the holiday because they associate it with a bad time. But not everybody has a good time around this time of year. And one of the best examples of those people is the Grinch himself. The Grinch, also known as Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, is a 2018 American 3D computer animated Christmas film produced by Illumination, the company that bought us Secret Life of Pets, Secret Life of Pets 2, and the Despicable Me films. It was based on the book How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss, and it's the third screen adaptation of the story, following the television special in 1966 by Chuck Jones, and the live action feature film from 2000 starring Jim Carrey. Can this movie be as memorable as the original Chuck Jones cartoon was? Well, let's find out. In the town of Whoville, the human-like creatures called Whos are filled with excitement about celebrating Christmas. However, the only one who is not amused is a cantankerous and green-furred creature named the Grinch, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who has a heart that is two sizes too small and lives in a cave on top of Mount Crumpet, just north of Whoville. Meanwhile, six-year-old Cindy Lou Who notices that her mother of Donna is overworked trying to take care of herself and her twin baby brothers, Buster and Bean initially decided to send a letter to Santa Claus to help her mother. Cindy encounters the Grinch. He sarcastically tells her that she'll have to talk to Santa face to face about it. She attempts to go to the North Pole to talk to Santa, but when Donna tells her that it would take months to travel there, she instead decides to trap Santa with the help of her friends. With Christmas approaching, a bungled attempt by the Grinch to ruin her tree lighting ceremony causes him to have a flashback about his childhood spent alone and unwanted in an orphanage. He acquires a fat reindeer, whom he calls Fred, and steals a sleigh from his neighbour, Mr. Bricklebomb. After a test run, the Grinch discovers that Fred has a family, and agrees to let Fred go home with them. On Christmas Eve, after making a Santa disguise and crafting dozens of gadgets to help him with his plan, the Grinch and his pet dog, Mats, who pulls the sleigh in Fred's place, go down to Whoville to steal the decorations and presents. And we all know how the story ends from there. Well, obviously. So how is the 2018 adaptation of The Grinch? It's not really up there with the Chuck Jones cartoon, but it's still better than the Jim Carrey version. While it's in no way better than the original Chuck Jones cartoon, it's way better than the Jim Carrey film. Mainly because it doesn't have the issues that the live action film had. Like pretty much everyone except Cindy Lou Who in Whoville being complete assholes to The Grinch. And, to be honest, Jim Carrey was the only saving part of the film, even though it wasn't enough to save the film. But this one doesn't have any hate-filled who's in it. It just has a nice town that's full of people that love Christmas. One advantage that this version has that the Jim Carrey version didn't have is the fact that this all done in CGI. So it blends itself more into Dr. Seuss's world. The Grinch himself, voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch, is a green furry creature who hates Christmas. In the original story, it's never really mentioned why he hates Christmas in the first place. Even though they do give a few possible reasons, like say, the size of his shoes or the size of his heart, they never explain what made him hate Christmas in the first place. And in the live action film, they made it that he was ridiculed and made fun of by the kids of Whoville. But in this one, it takes a more personal backstory by saying that he was abandoned and alone in an orphanage every year when he was a child. And that was the reason he hated Christmas, because he didn't associate it with a good time. While it's not what Dr. Seuss wrote in, in the book, it does give a pretty good explanation to why he hates Christmas so much. Benedict Cumberbatch just plays the part of the Grinch superbly in this version. 
and I just love his grouchy American voice that he puts on for the character. It just fits him. There's Cindy Lou Who, voiced by Cameron Seeley, a young resident of Whoville who wants to send a letter to Santa Claus and get him to help his mum. Cindy Lou Who was given a larger part in this movie compared to the other versions. I mean a larger part that was tolerable. In the original film, she had a small part where she spotted the Grinch stealing the Christmas tree and he had to lie to her about why she was taking it in the first place. And in the live action film, she was the one that helped change the Grinch's heart. And this movie gives Cindy a bigger motivation by having her want to meet Santa to get his assistance on helping her mother Donna since she's overworked. Cindy Lou Who's thing about trying to catch Santa to make her Christmas wish come true just really seems to me like a plot device to make the story a bit longer. But it's not a terrible plot device, by all means, it's just a plot device. Along with having this trying to get Santa Claus to help out her mother role, Cindy Lou has also had an age change compared to the original story. In the original story, as well as the Chuck Jones short, she was no more than two, whereas in the movie she's six years old. Now, I've got nothing against that change because it just makes it more interesting for the kids to root for a character that's six years old. And while there's nothing wrong with having a main character that's no more than two years old, most stories just seem more interesting when they seem to have children that are older than that. There's Max, the Grinch's loyal dog, who sticks by his side no matter what. And I've heard some people complain that Max in The Grinch kind of looks like Max from Secret Life of Pets. And from seeing both characters side by side and the fact that it's done by the same company, I can see their point. I mean, they could have at least made Max look a little bit different to Max from Secret Life of Pets like perhaps making him look similar to what the dog looked like in the original story. The other characters include Brinklebaum, the jolly bearded citizen of Whoville who lives next to the Grinch, and he's basically just the cheerful jolly guy that a lot of people live next door to. He's just the sort of bloke that most people know and either like or dislike because of their niceness. And there's also Gobbert, Atzel, Ozzy and Izzy, Cindy Lou's friends. Cindy Lou's overworked single mother, Donna Who, who's one of those kind and loving mothers who lives with just the three kids and does her best to keep up with everything. And I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And the mayor of Fruitville is voiced by legendary actress Angela Lansbury. Something I never expected to see in The Grinch when I went to see it last year was Angela Lansbury's voice coming out of the mayor of Fruitville. That was just a great surprise to me. And when they started the scene where they did the Christmas light switch on, I was saying to my mother, is that Angela Lansbury? And as we listened more and more to it, we were like, oh my god, that is Angela Lansbury. It's just amazing that despite her age, Angela still gets a lot of film roles. And the narrator of the movie is played by Farrell Williams. And that's quite a change from the previous incarnation, since the How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Chuck Jones was narrated by Boris Karloff and the live action film was narrated by Anthony Hopkins. Now these two had really nice charming voices that you could just shut your eyes and just imagine them telling the stories without even having to look at the pictures. But the narrator in this movie just sounds like a rapper. It just doesn't have the same charm as the previous narrators did. But because he doesn't really talk a lot compared to the other versions, I can tolerate it. And obviously this wouldn't be a Grinch movie without the song Your Mean One Mr. Grinch. But did they really have to make it a rap song? And the movie CGI is just spectacular in my opinion. It just blends itself really well to Seuss's world compared to doing it in live action. And I absolutely adore the layout of Whoville. It just looks like a gingerbread house layout. And when you look at it from a distance in the movie, like say from the Grinch's cave or just an overall look at the place, it just looks like a huge gingerbread village. And it just adds to the whimsicalness of this adaption of the story. Another thing I love about this movie is that it takes its time for the Grinch to put his plan together. Like with the original cartoon, it was sort of rushed out in one whole day. But in this one, it just takes its time in a few days for the Grinch to put his plan together, piece by piece. Like we see the various stages he goes through to plan his heist of Christmas. Like reading books about how Christmas works, how to be Santa Claus, 
and he goes out of his way to try and kidnap a reindeer to use to pull a sleigh. And he ends up getting a fat one named Fred, who uses the sleigh from his neighbour. But after the Grinch discovers that Fred has a family, he agrees to let Fred go home with them. Which gives us a new reason to why Max pulls the sleigh. And of course, he made a better effort with the Santa Claus outfit, bringing in a beard as well as the hat and coat. Because in the original, as well as the Chuck Jones cartoon and the live action version, it's just a hat and a coat. Nothing really to disguise his face. But in this one, he puts more effort into it by giving himself a beard. And I just love how they wrote it out, how he made his plan work piece by piece. And when the Grinch starts stealing Christmas, that's when the most creative moments begin. I mean, all these gadgets and wacky contraptions that he comes up with to help him steal the presents and treats and Christmas trees from every home in Whoville is just so imaginative and creative. And it's just a joy to watch. It's honestly one of the best moments throughout the entire movie. And my major nitpick with this scene was the fact that they didn't use Your Mean One Mr. Grinch as the montage music for it like they did with the Chuck Jones cartoon because they had to replace it with a rap version of the song in the beginning. Yeah, I still don't get why they made the song a rap in this movie, but it doesn't come close to ruining this creative moment. And there are some running gags in this movie that are either funny or not so funny. The funniest one for me being the Screaming Goat, which is an obvious reference to the Screaming Goat video on the internet. If you've never watched the teaser trailers for this movie, then you wouldn't have seen this character coming. And even if you've known about it from the trailers, you still get a laugh out of it, because it's just so unexpected when it shows up. Oh, hey there. Sorry, little goat. I was calling for a <coughs> What was that? Strange goat. And it only shows up in the movie four times, so the joke isn't overused, which can be a huge flaw with comedies, using a joke so many times that it gets really old really fast. But here they don't fall into that trap and just use it at the right moments. Where are you? Stop following us! Shoot! Away! Go back to the goat farm! Go eat a cab! So in conclusion, The Grinch isn't as good as the Chuck Jones adaption of the story, but it is better than the 2000 live action version. It has a nice, whimsical feeling about it that you expect to see in Christmas movies. And it's one of the better adaptions of Dr. Seuss's story, coming second place to move right behind the original Chuck Jones cartoon, with some great acting from Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Lansbury, the list goes on. It has a few moments that aren't completely funny, but it does make up for it with his funny jokes and the whimsical moments and soft-hearted moments. And that's a nice little expansion to the original story. So while The Grinch isn't exactly up there with Chuck Jones' version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, it's still the best cinema adaptation of The Grinch by far. So The Grinch is a good enough adaption to the story. I just don't think it's up there with the original 1966 Chuck Jones cartoon. So if you want a movie that will get you into the Christmas spirit, then The Grinch is definitely one to watch. It's a very good adaption to Dr. Seuss's original story, and it's just one of those nice Christmas movies that really gets you into the season. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're a Christmas lover. It's got a lot of whimsical and light-hearted moments that will really get you into the Christmas season. I'm Darling44, and I'll see you next time, folks. Thank mm -hmm. you.